Welcome back. This is the Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. Please subscribe right here and hit the notification bell. You'll get notifications for this series and many others. We're doing multivariable calculus, chapter zero, which is differential equations. This time we're doing zero, section 0 0.3, which is a linear first order differential equations. This lecture specifically, we're going to do the definition of a linear first order ordinary differential equation and do some examples with solutions. Let's do that. Okay, remember from the previous video, in general, what, regardless of the order of the differential equation, it's linear if every term is a constant uh, function of our independent variable x, or a function of x times exactly one of y or the derivatives. Therefore, for a first order differential equation, the general form of a linear equation is going to look like this. If we have a of x is not zero, we want to immediately put it in standard form. So we divide by a of x and we get the standard form of the differential equation. All right, then from the standard form of a linear first order differential equation, we want to solve for y. Therefore, we know that if we have some other function mu of x, say, and we have the product mu times y, then the derivative by the product rule tells us that in general, if we had the multiplication of mu of x times y of x, if we're going to take the derivative, we get by the product rule mu y prime plus mu prime y. Cleverly noticing that in our ODE then, if we multiply both sides by this integrating factor, we're going to call it mu, so we multiply both sides by mu of x, what we're going to now get is we have, we're trying to notice this product rule here. And for that to work, we would need mu prime to equal mu p of x for this to work, for that to be the product rule. Then we're going to cleverly solve for mu in this. This is, it turns out, a separable ordinary differential equation. And so we're going to separate this and solve for this and get the integrating factor explicitly and then give a technique for systematically solving linear first order differential equations from the standard form. Let's do that next. All right, moving that up, we have multiplied the standard form of a linear first order differential equation by the integrating factor mu. And then we're trying to see the left hand side as the product rule. For that to happen, we need mu y prime, mu prime y. So this right here must be the derivative of mu. So we're requiring this, that the derivative of mu with respect to x is proportional to itself times p of x. That happens to be a separable ordinary differential equation. You can see it easier in Leibniz notation. Therefore, we separate the variables. We integrate both sides. Doing that cleverly, we get the natural log of the absolute value of mu equals the integral of p of x dx plus c. We can assume without loss of generality that c is zero. Therefore, we get the integrating factor mu of x is e to the integral of p of x dx. We're going to do step by step right away, and so this is the derivation, but one of the things you're going to have to do is multiply both sides by the integrating factor, find the integrating factor, and then solve for y in these equations. This is the integrating factor that we're going to need. Good. All right, continuing. If we start from this now, or again, we've multiplied by mu of x on both sides. We're assuming, and we have the integrating factor we can compute now, e to the integral of p to the x dx. Now we can collapse that left-hand side as the product rule and integrate both sides with respect to x. And that tells us by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can cancel the derivative with the antiderivative. And therefore we get mu of x times y of x is equal to the integral of mu of x times q of x dx plus a constant of integration. What does that finally give us? Let's move that up and we will now have the explicit solution to a linear first order differential equation. Let's do that. Okay, finally explicitly solving, we can divide both sides by mu of x now and we have the general explicit solution to a linear first order differential equation, which is given by this expression, where mu of x is e to the integral of p of x dx. 
Let's do the steps for solving linear first order differential equations, and then we'll do an example, at least one example, for the first video. Okay, here's the steps for solving linear first order ordinary differential equations. Step one, place it in standard form. This, remember, we have to divide. Step one is always get the dy dx by itself, and then whatever's in front of y is p of x. Step two, find the integrating factor by computing e to the integral of p of x dx. When we do the examples, compute the integral first and then raise it to the e to the x. Step three, multiply both sides of the standard form by this integrating factor and write the left-hand side as the product rule. Then once we've done that, once we've written the left-hand side as the product rule of mu times y, we integrate both sides with respect to x and then divide and solve for y to give us the explicit general solution to a linear first order differential equation. Let's do some examples. All right, example one asks us to solve the differential equation x dy dx equals x squared plus 3y for x which is positive. Step one, standard form. This, this is not in standard form. What we have to do is first I write it as x dy dx minus 3y equals x squared. That looks similar. And then the first rule is always get rid of the a of x now. This is a of x dy dx plus b of x y equals c of x. <coughs> Then you divide by a of x to get the standard form, and that's going to give us dy dx minus 3, so plus negative 3x is p times y equals, we divide by x on the other side as well, so we get x squared over x, which is x. This is the standard form. Step 2. Find the integrating factor. So p of x, we're careful, that's why we get the standard form, is negative 3 over x. Therefore, the integral of p of x dx is equal to the integral of negative 3 over x dx, which is negative 3, the integral of 1 over x dx, which is equal to negative 3, the natural log of the absolute value of x, which therefore tells me mu of x is e to the integral of p of x dx, which is e to the natural log of, using the exponent I bring this in, x to the negative 3. I can take the absolute values off because it told me x was positive, so the absolute value of x is equal to x in this case. E's cancel, and this gives me mu of x is equal to x to the negative 3. Step three, once I have the integrating factor and I have the standard form, I multiply the standard form on both sides by the integrating factor. That gives me x to the negative three dy dx minus three x to the negative, or sorry, x to the four on the bottom, y equals x to the negative 2 on the other side. So I've multiplied both sides by x to the negative 3 and distributed it onto each spot. Good. Let's clean that up and move it up. All right, still in step 3, basically what we've done is multiply both sides by the integrating factor x to the negative 3 and then written the left-hand side as the product rule of the integrating factor times y. That will happen every time, so try to practice if you and get used to that. Then what step four says is integrate both sides with respect to x to cancel the derivative here, and then we can solve for y. So integrating both sides with respect to x that gives us the derivative and the integral cancel by the fundamental theorem of calculus, and that gives me x to the negative three y equals the integral of x to the negative two dx plus c. Integrating this using the power rule, that gives me x to the negative 3y equals negative 1 over x plus c. And dividing, or again, solving for y, this will give us 
y of x explicitly is equal to multiplying both sides by x to the cubed is going to give me negative x squared plus cx cubed. This is the explicit solution to this linear first order differential equation. Let's do one more. Okay, example two says solve this differential equation, which is linear first order, but it's not in standard form again. So step one, put it in standard form. Dividing, I get dy dx plus one over x plus one. Y equals root x over x plus one. Now, what are we gonna do with that? Step two, find the integrating factor. In our case, we have that that will be this is p of x, so the integral of 1 over x plus 1 dx is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1. That tells me that the integrating factor of mu of x is e to the natural log of x plus 1, which tells me I get x plus 1. Again, x is going to be greater than 0 or equal to 0 because we have the square root anyways. But just to make sure, I think I forgot, but there, we can take the absolute value off. And so this is our integrating factor. Step three, once we have the standard form and our integrating factor, we multiply both sides by our integrating factor. That gives us x plus one dy dx plus y equals square root of x. This is the product rule of x plus one and y. So we write that the left hand side as x plus one times y primed equals the square root of x. Now step four is we integrate both sides with respect to x to get rid of the derivative on the left hand side and solve for y. So four, we get the integral of the derivative with respect to x of x plus one times y dx, these cancel is equal to the integral of the square root of x dx. Let's move that up and solve. All right, from here we have that x plus one times y will equal the integral of the square root of x dx. Remember, get rid of the square root anytime you can. That's one half exponent. I can use the power rule now. That's one over one half plus one x to the one half plus one plus c, which gives me x plus one times y is equal to two thirds x to the three over two plus c. And therefore, finally, solving for y, we divide both sides by the integrating factor, and that will give me y is equal to 2 over 3 x to the 3 over 2 plus c times 1 over x plus 1. We can leave it like that, but this is the solution. Please subscribe right here and hit the notification bell. You'll get notifications for this series and many others on my channel. I'm the Tutor Wizard. See you next time.